Uh, so I was gonna pressure wash my deck, but um, I think it's gonna rain. If you ever wanted to know what stink bugs look like, that is them. <coughs> okay, I forgot about what home care is like. Home care, home maintenance, owning a house. I forgot all of the things that come along with owning a house. It's been like three years since we lived in our house back in St. John's. In that three years, I kind of forgot what it was like to like weed your own flower beds, have to call pest control, had to call, you know, maintenance people, and then, you know, obviously taking care of all of the things that come with having a house, including, but not limited to, pressure washing the deck. Our deck is old. I think it's like probably 20 years old. It's in pretty rough shape. I think next summer we're gonna like completely redo it. I wanna use it this summer and it's kind of full of dirt and grossness. So I gotta clean it, see what it looks like. Um, it's kind of windy, it's kind of gross, and I think it's gonna rain. I'm assuming I can, I've never pressure washed a deck before. So I've read on the internet that it's really easy to ruin your deck, but I'm not really that concerned because the deck is kind of like ruined anyway. So we're, we're just gonna try it. <laughs> It's not looking so good. It's a little dirty. So I kind of gave up on filming this deck situation. And I don't know why I did that. I think that the part of me didn't think that it would really work out that well, and it kind of didn't, but Something happened today that made me think that I should probably be documenting this to share with you guys because it's kind of funny. It started raining on me the other day when I was pressure washing the deck, so I stopped and then days later I came out and I put the cleaner on the deck, I scrubbed it down, pressure washed it. Not all of the stain came up, it's so blown out. But it was enough that I was just gonna like, just paint it, we're just gonna paint it. Well, I went down to the basement looking for the stain color that they used on the deck. So I found it, they don't make that color anymore. They still have the formula, so I went and picked up the stain and I started painting and it's white, like it's blue white. It does not match the house at all. I, uh, I just decided to go get some matte black solid stain and then we're just gonna paint it matte black. Surprise? No, me either. So the color is not completely matte black. It's called Alder Black or Alder something. Title, that's that's the name. A grayish brownish black. I think it's gonna dry darker, but I think it's gonna look much nicer with the house. Cause the house has kind of like a greenish undertone. And then the tr the window trim is like kind of a cream beige color. There's a wasp, oh my God. Oh Jesus, get away from me. Eh. We'll see what it looks like. How's it going out here? So definitely made this right, the right color with this one. What do you think of it? Uh, it looks way better than that white gray. Oh my God, so much better. I think this is gonna look really good. Mm -hmm. I think this is the color I want the house to be. Maybe a bit darker. Um, I'm, I'm working on a secret project that you guys aren't allowed to know about yet. Well, if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you've probably seen stories. So we're not gonna tell you what we're doing as incentive to follow us on Instagram. To be continued at a later date. Um, I'm gonna go back down and work on my project while you can sit, continue to paint. Do you wanna turn my funky beats back on? Funky beats, engage. <laughs> Tuxedo time. Tuxedo time, where we wear tuxedos. And it is time. We haven't done a tuxedo time in so long. It's been so long since we, yeah. like, yeah, there's probably a bunch of new people who are like, what the f is tuxedo time? Tuxedo time is where we wear tuxedos and it is time. Right, it's time to wear tuxedos. And a tuxedo doesn't mean like a tuxedo. It means obviously sweatshirts and sweatpants and the biggest sweatshirt you can find and all the comfiness looking your shittiest. For those of you guys who are seasoned watchers of this channel, how would you feel if Tuxedo Time turned into a podcast? Let us know in the comments below. A, like the idea of Tuxedo Time being a podcast, probably a video podcast, and B, what you'd like to hear us talk about on said podcast. So we have some questions. We reached out to you guys on Twitter. If you're not following us on Twitter, at Becky and Chris. So this whole, I guess, theme was about the deck. Well, it was about home. Home, yeah. Home. Yeah. Which I, includes the deck. Yeah, I started working on the deck and then I stopped filming it. <laughs> and then we have, so we have this sequence. You, you even cut it together too. I did. You had the half of a vlog done. And yeah. you're like, I don't know where this is going. Okay, and what what happened was that I stayed in the deck and then I was like, oh, I have to go down and do like every single crevice. And then I just like didn't. <laughs> so, so we anyway. have a half stained deck? Yeah. No, we have a fully stained deck with some 
With some holidays in the paint. Some holidays in the paint. Okay, okay. questions. Are you ready? We're gonna go rapid fire because we okay. don't want to take fire. our tip from the last video. Okay, Lila from YouTube says, what do you like least about your house? Uh, I should have thought of answers beforehand. You said least. you had an answer for this already. No, I didn't. You're like, oh, I know, I know my, I know my answer. Yeah, but I forgot. <laughs> I really want to renovate the kitchen slash coffee station slash living room area, but mostly the kitchen. So that's what I like least about the house. I'm not a fan of the ceiling in our master bedroom. Okay, Josh Haynes asked, is the house haunted? I hope not. I don't think so. I get, I get good vibes from this house. I've gotten some real bad vibes from some of the houses we've looked at. Really? Yeah. Like dead vibes? Yeah, like bodies buried in the basement vibes. No? Next question. Connor asks, do you make 3D renders or test your home improvements in Photoshop before starting the changes or do you just jump in and figure it out as you go? Most of the time do mock-ups. If it's not a mood board in Illustrator where I take every product that I'm gonna put in the room, kind of comp it together to make sure it looks good. Or I'll take a photo if we're doing something like painting or building some built-ins and we're not really sure if it's gonna work. I'll Photoshop those just to see what it actually looks like. So for example, we're thinking about painting uh, our windows, not the glass portion, but the frame portion black in the living room. So I Photoshopped it so you can kind of see the difference. This is without the paint and this is with the paint. And I think it gives us a pretty good idea of what that's gonna look like. Uh, I don't really do a whole lot of that only because she's mostly the design genius behind it all. Um, but things that I do take point on would be the construction projects. And so if we're doing like built-ins, if we're doing any projects that we're gonna try to fit something into a space, uh, for example, the closet that we renovated, uh, link to that video up here, I will make a scale diagram in Illustrator and then make sure the proportions are all right. Mason Summers asks, what, where's your favorite place to chill? Everyone has a chair or some place they just like to kick back and relax. It's a tie between mm -hmm. that corner with those two other chairs yeah, or the sectional. Mine is also the same. Everyday Family asks, how do you prioritize your project list? So many ideas, we just can't figure out where we want to start. We have a list now of projects we want to do, rooms we want to complete, and we're really, we're like five months behind on the renovation. Once the fall and winter comes, like those are good months to be renovating. Yeah, there's just so much on the go in the summer. We're starting with the basement because we want to do our master bedroom and our bathroom. But in order to do that, we need to move out. So we're finishing the rooms in the basement so we can move out into the basement, use the bathroom and bedroom downstairs, and then we'll move back upstairs and then we'll finish the ceilings where we're having access kind of to- Right, close up all the plumbing. Close up all the plumbing, yeah. yeah. And then also we want to do like the living room, but we can't do the living room without doing the kitchen because there's like kind of like a floor scenario that's happening there. And then we can't do the kitchen and the living room without doing the coffee nook. So that's kind of like one giant Jesus project, which we're gonna do probably in the fall slash winter because it's just easier to do it when there's not a lot on the go. Patrick, <laughs> guys, if you don't follow at I'm Patrick T on Twitter, you're like severely missing out everyday lols. But anyway, he, uh, he's asking, does it still smell like an old museum? And Patrick, yes, sometimes it does smell like an old museum still. For the record, I've never smelled that smell before. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I do not know what you're talking about. Okay, in the kitchen I smell it and in the living room. Not in the rooms that are freshly painted. And now that we've got like the new furniture in the living room, it's like harder to smell, but you can still smell it. Like a church, like an old museum, like old wood. That's Steven says, if your house was burning out of all the gear you have, what would be the first seven things you'd grab gear wise? For what's the first piece of gear you'd grab? Whatever was closest to me, because in an emergency, my party would be getting the hell out of a burning house. Yeah, I'd probably grab the hard drives or the computer. Alan Bradbury, what most drew you to your home specifically? When we were looking at the listings, I passed by this house and was like, nope, next. And then I came back to it weeks later and then I was like, oh, okay, this is nice. And I came to see it and we we're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, that was kind of like us. What? Like I passed over you initially. I was like, eh, whatever. And then I was like, oh, this is nice. I recall you poking me with a ruler and <laughs> putting my germs on people. So that was a thing. Anyway. I think I like the windows the most. The sort of mid-century stylings or mid-century style, but it being actually like a modern house that was built recently. Mm -hmm. And the acreage, it has enough land to land a helicopter in the yard, yeah. which was really, that was the only criteria that I had. The windows did it for me. Yeah, link to that video up here. Okay, is there anything you've done um, at home that has helped increase productivity? I think having enough space to store all of our shit helps and the redesigned office, which I'll link up here, has helped also. 
Yeah, we've got that dual commando works. <laughs> commando. commando. <laughs> someone said, didn't someone make a reference to the commando? They said, I thought this, someone said it's in a comment or a tweet. Oh, yeah, it was a commando workstation. I read commando first. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying it. Incredible. Um, yeah, no, I think having a dual workstation has been awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until you took it over with your 3D printer. It's my drone factory. Brendan O'Keefe. Best weekend projects to modernize an older home, similar to painting old doors slash fixtures. Paint literally can transform a room. Swapping out hardware on doors, cabinetry, uh, light, switching out light fixtures. Yeah, you don't need to knock down walls. You don't need to put new flooring in. You don't need to do mm -hmm. these big construction projects. A couple of new throw pillows, maybe some blankets, some plants, new accessories in your living room could, or bedroom or whatever can completely also. So basically we just said everything. Just do everything. Renovate your whole house. <laughs> Gabe's asking how to spice up how to spice up a tiny dorm style apartment without the ability to paint slash modify. You're really left with just the furnishings then. The furnishings and also I think you can get away with doing art. You can kind of use those 3M removable Velcro picture frame hangers. So if you do like a couple of big ones to cover up some of the wall, that can work. And usually you can take them down with minimal or no damage if you're careful. Yeah, and making a nice desk area too. Because in dorms, you're pretty much just limited to a bed and then a desk. That's mm -hmm. where you live. Making a nice area that you can work, that you can you know, study at. I think mm -hmm. that that would be you know, a good use of, of your resources. Yeah. Also, like lighting. Fairy lights, I don't like them, but they definitely give a nice ambiance to like a <laughs> genre. genre. They definitely give like a nice vibe to a dorm room. My sister used to have those up in her room. So, you know, kill the overhead lights, lamps, floor lamp, table lamp fairy lights or like Christmas lights. Uh, you can get some RGB LEDs, color changing LEDs. Mm -hmm. That can totally change the feel of a room at night. Ryan is asking, what is it like now having multiple rooms and tons of space to turn into a creative stronghold? Stronghold, <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> yeah, me too. We're literally kind of creating sets all over the house. So to have different places to film in. Yeah, having rooms awesome. It's, it's been a while since we had space, mm -hmm. living in apartments two times before this. Lewis asks, can we see the drone Chris has been working on? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Never. Really? Oh my god. There's two of them. Okay, that's done. Continue. Okay. Austin says if you had to pick a style that wasn't monochromatic, what would it be? What do you mean, like a color scheme? Or I guess, because like I feel like our style is mid-century modern scanning. Pat called it evil Scandinavian, which I really like. But I think it's a mix of mid-century and Scandinavian. Mm-hmm. Um but we don't really like to use color. In the past, when I bought colors, I've always hated them, and then they end up in the basement. I would probably do a very industrial feel, mm -hmm. um, or kind of a, a dark nautical theme, kind of like I did in my office in St. John's. Mm -hmm. I would do a really light, airy Scandinavian feel, maybe with some of that like Scandinavian pink, maybe some, what are those rugs called, like Turkish rugs? I don't know, probably that. Jeff say. Bradley asks, I want to create a plant corner. Any recommendations for easy to care for plants that are also animal friendly? I don't know a lot about plants. She kills every single plant. All of these plants have been alive for like a year, except for like three of them. Oh man, I just threw away all of the herbs. Those aren't plants. <laughs> okay, they're herbs. <laughs> herbs, okay? You're a herb. Your face is a herb. <laughs> Mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant, they're both called the same thing, are impossible to kill. Deadly choice, not sure if they're good for animals, but our friends Billy and Pat have a plant shop called Daddy's Plants. I'll link their Instagram in the description box. You can just go over there and maybe they can answer your plant questions. They have a lot of cool stuff and they have cats, so they'll probably know. Um, one final cue from Kurz, K, Fitz, Kurz, Fitz underscore Kurz. KRZ. Will we soon get to see an MTV Cribs type home walk around? Well, Curs. We actually did one when we first moved in, didn't we? Yes, we did. We briefly walked around the upper floor of our house showing you guys some of our rooms. We haven't really shown you an up-to-date one just because we haven't finished any projects. We're working on a bigger project where we'll show you all of that. Yeah, that's to come at a later date, probably next year. Fireside Edition Tuxedo Time. Yes. Comes to an end. It does. Q&A, thank you for your questions. Hope you like the answers. Um, and let us know again if you think that you would like a Tuxedo Time podcast edition because we're planning on doing that and I'd like to know your thoughts and I'd like to know what you guys would want to listen to in your earbuds. What if they're wearing full over-the-ear headphones and it's not earbuds? If you're... Would you like to hear us in your headphones? <laughs>
We'll shut it down this here. This was nice. Yeah. You want to end it? Yeah, okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for your questions. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll see you. What is happening? I don't know. I think you need to go to sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Do we finish Whoa. it? If you like the video, Whoa. give it a thumbs up. Chris, the mic is behind you. Fireside ASMR Can edition. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified. Are you going to be your gymnastics self as, for Halloween? I'm going to put some photos of you up on Instagram on the story. What kind of photos of me? I've got a compilation of them. What kind of compilation? Just you wait. Wait for me. I've got a compilation. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the ball so you got no we post nobody else. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oop, boop. Mike, dude.